Okay, in this section uh, of video, we're going to talk about banking uh, with S6L. Uh, in particular, obviously, how you're banking input faders and output faders and navigating all your inputs and outputs. Um, there are five banking modes on S6L. Uh, and it's worth noting at this point that, you know, one of the differences we have been between S6L and our previous version of Venue is that uh, any fader can represent any kind of processing channel. It can be an input processing channel, can be any output master, etc. as opposed to what we had in Venue originally, which was a dedicated set of outputs and a dedicated set of input faders. All right, We actually have a lot more flexibility with S6L and can do a lot more very cool things in terms of navigation, as you'll see here. So um, to kind of help kind of drive home this point, uh, we kind of take advantage of the user-defined colors for inputs and outputs. And if you boot up the console in its initial state or load one of the demo files, you would see this color scheme. So I'll bring your attention to the overview page uh, in the Venue software, and you'll notice that all of the inputs currently come up as green, okay? If we go to the output section, you'll notice that it's broken up into some different colors. All of my auxiliary masters are sitting in purple. All of my groups are sitting in yellow. Uh, matrixes are sitting in white, left, right, master in red, VCAs would be in blue. Okay, so that kind of helps you kind of navigate just right out of the gate to, to help you differentiate between input and output. Now, in terms of the actual modes themselves, I'm going to bring your attention back to the MLM here. That's the master live module right here in the center of the console. And as I mentioned, we have five uh, banking modes on S6L. And if you looked up into the left, upper left-hand corner of the MLM, you'll see four switches here. One's labeled layouts, inputs, VCAs, and outputs, all right? Now, as I mentioned, there are five modes, four switches, all right? So that's really kind of your first clue into what mode you're actually in. So if, if all of those switches are dark, meaning none of their LEDs are lit, then you are in venue mode. We've kind of affectionately labeled that because it makes the console operate very similar to how venue used to operate in the past, on the past consoles like D-Show and Profile. Uh, and by that, I mean you have a dedicated set of output faders surrounded by a dedicated set of input faders. That's considered venue mode. All right, the way we navigate those different uh, banks is through this TFT screen right in the middle of the MLM. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, it's a list of input banks. It would, in, in this situation where we have output faders surrounded by uh, input faders on a 32-channel frame, you would see input banks 1 through 24, 25 through 48, 49 through 72, and right on down the line. Now, I've put in some different fader looks here just to kind of drive home the point of where I'm going, but you can see all the different fader banks available to you. And I don't want to say it's an infinite amount of those, but this whole list can scale depending on how you have your console laid out, whether it's in 21 inputs or 32 inputs, etc., which you'll see coming up. In the output section, you'll notice that we have our color over there kind of indicating the different color types or output types. Purple for auxes, blue for VCAs, uh, if we move on down, yellow for groups, white for matrixes, and even all the way to the left, right master. So notice we're, we're banking those independently. We're banking outputs independently from inputs there. Very powerful. The vast majority of users will probably be in this mode for the majority of their work. Okay, another nice thing that comes along with that navigation scheme is the ability to nudge. All right, and by nudge, I mean, what I'm referring to there is simply shifting the console left or right to get to additional faders. So you'll also notice that the MLM here, even when I'm in venue mode, I have a green arrow that is lit to the right. And I have two other choices available, that of all and eight, all right? So with all and eight dark, that is telling me that I'm nudging in one channel increments, all right? So here you'll see me nudging, all right? and you know, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on here so uh, with all the similar colors. So I've actually kind of taken the uh, liberty of making a show file that has different colors per eight channels. All right, so I'm going to load that really quick just to kind of give you a better indication of what's going on. So let me just load that. All right, and we'll stay there. All right, so you'll notice now I've, and it's just, just through loading a different show file, I've taken all the color out of the output section and I've replaced the input sections with uh, sections of eight. Matter of fact, I'll take you back to the overview screen really briefly here just so you can see what's going on. 
So I have sections of eight channels that all have different colors. Outputs now has no color whatsoever, right? And this is really to do nothing other than just demonstrate how Nudge is working on the console. So again, we're in single channel nudge, so just pay attention to the colors on the overhead view of the console here. And you'll notice that I'm just moving channels one at a time, left to right, okay? Now, the other thing you'll notice here is that I now end up with two lights flashing here in the input banking, meaning I'm actually looking across two of the designated banks. If I wanna snap it back to its regular sets of 24, I just simply press one of the buttons and it all snaps back, all right? Likewise, I can always, always move in channels of eight as well. All I do is select eight, and now watching your colors here, you'll see I'm moving in sections of eight. Uh, and likewise, I can go to all as well, which is actually the equivalent of just going through the buttons. We're just going through them sequentially. Uh, so here I'm just moving in sections of 24 now, right? Okay, and you can see I'm moving down in the TFT banks here as well. All right, so that's nudge. Uh, that works in venue mode, it works in the other modes as well, uh, which I'll show you here coming up. All right, so let's go to our next actual mode that is not venue mode. Uh, let's switch over to inputs. Let's go all inputs. So notice now that the inputs light is lit in the MLM, and you would also notice that our banking uh, segments have changed in terms of number. Now they are 1 through 32, 33 through 64, uh, 65 through 96, and right on down the line. And you can also notice that we have 32 input faders here. Remember now, I stripped all the color out of the outputs, and we only have color on the inputs right now. So you're seeing 32 inputs on the top layer of the console. And likewise, we can just go right on down in sections of 32 now, looking at 32 channels of inputs at a time. Nudge works here as well. As you can see, I can nudge in single channel in uh, increments, eight channel, all channels, moving right on down the line, right? I can, I can do all kinds of nudge capability there as well. All right, so uh, likewise, uh, a similar paradigm is gonna play out for outputs. I'm gonna go to outputs now. Notice I've taken all the color out. I'm actually gonna load another show file that actually puts all the color back in the outputs. And if we just compare now, I'll go back to the overview just to show it to you one more time. I've taken all the color out of the inputs. I only have color in the outputs in the default scheme right now. And you'll notice that once I press the outputs button in the MLM, what I have come up are all the different output choices. So now I can look at my aux masters, I can look at my group masters, I can look at all my matrix masters, or even my left right master, just simply navigating it. But it's the top layer of the console is dedicated to outputs at that point, okay? All right, let's uh, move on to our last, uh, actually not our last, our next uh, banking mode here, and that is VCAs, right? So if I press VCAs, notice the entire top layer of the console turns to VCA masters. Uh, I have all uh, 32 VCA masters available to me because this is a 32 fader console, okay? So very simple to get around on those. You can do all of your assignment, etc. from there. Let's move on to layouts now. And again, I'm gonna load Another show file, again, just to drive this home in terms of color of exactly what's happening here. And I'm gonna go back to our default scheme. I'm gonna go back to all green for inputs and all of our color uh, separation for outputs now. Now layouts is uh, basically speaking to a user-defined layout, meaning I can have a top layer that is any combination of inputs and any outputs in any order that I want it to be. And if you take a look at the console right now, it should drive home that point. Remember, green represents inputs, the remaining colors represent outputs. So if we were just to go left to right on the user-defined layer, you can see I have two inputs here followed by an aux master, two inputs followed by a group master, three inputs followed by matrices, inputs followed by groups and VCAs and inputs and the left right master inputs and VCAs. So completely scattered out here, but all accessible to us on one layer. And again, this is completely user definable. You can pick the order, you can pick whatever you want to be on that user defined layer. And that is one of your layout schemes. That's one of your layout or, or your banking modes is to go to layouts. Um, 
It's also worth noting that user-defined layouts are librariable. You can have up to 999 different ones stored in the layouts library. They're also snapshotable, meaning with every snapshot, I could have a new layout come up here that is specifically tied to that particular snapshot. Okay, so lots of really, really great functionality here. And I, don't, and I know for me, after being out working with it for a while, this was the money mode for me. I ended up in user-defined layouts for the entire night. Matter of fact, I hardly ever used any of the other navigation modes during the show. I almost did everything uh, in user-defined layers. Um, the last thing I probably want to discuss with you uh, with regard to our modes is using bank safe. And I think this is relative just because uh, banking uh, applies here. We're talking about a banking discussion. So let's, let's talk about how safes impact banking. On S6L, we've kind of expanded the bank safe workflow, enhanced it a little bit uh, compared to the, the previous uh, version in Venue. And uh, one of the main changes we've made, obviously, is that we need to be able to bank safe inputs as well as outputs now. And that's primarily driven because we have faders down here, as I said earlier, that can be either inputs or outputs. So uh, I'll take you right to the options page. You can have a look here in interaction. And you can see that we give the ability to discreetly offer bank safe in inputs and outputs. And remember, that's the assignment to this top level safe switch. So the idea here is that if I bank safe something, it's going to stay on the top layer regardless of where I go or what I do on the console. It's a really important feature to have, especially for live mixing where you have channels that are money channels. I mean, you have to have your fingers on them or have access to them quickly all the time. All right, so I'm gonna show you bank safing here. I'm gonna put, put us in uh, user-defined layers here. Uh, and you'll notice, uh, remember, we have a combination of inputs and outputs here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and safe up a few channels. I'm going to safe up some inputs as well as some outputs here. So these are our, our safe channels here. They're going to stay on the top layer. And just to exaggerate this and drive it home, I'm just going to push these faders all the way to the top so you can easily identify them. I don't suggest that you do this in the show, okay? So... Um, these are safe now, and now I'm going to switch this over to inputs mode, which would normally put 1 through 32 inputs right here on the console, right? So in this situation, you can notice that the faders stayed to the top layer. So I have a group of faders that are inputs as well as outputs that are uh, remained on the top layer. Now, I'm sure it's not lost on anyone. Uh, people recognize this handily with the other versions of BankSafe. Well, what happens if I need to get to those channels that are actually under there? In this case, it would be channel 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. How do I get to those inputs if the safes are covering them up? And this is where S6L's nudge feature really comes into play and, and helps you out. So I'm in inputs now. Notice I'm in single channel nudge. So I'm just gonna nudge out from under those uh, faders five clicks and you'll see now that I have 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 available to me now right on the surface, right? I, I've just moved out from underneath them. I, I've shifted the faders uh, underneath the safes, all right? If I want to get back to where I normally was, just simply press the bank button again and it snaps back to where it was. Now, we give you an additional ability in S6L, which I've, I have found to be very, very handy. I love this feature that we've built in. And as, uh, as an event, now you can bypass your safes temporarily. All right, so I'm gonna take you back to the big screen. I'm gonna go back to media page now, which is where we house events, right? And you'll notice as I highlight bank safe uh, bypass here, this is how you build it. It's a very simple build. It's a function switch. I've actually put in a flash on the function switch to function or to flash when I'm in bypass. So uh, if we go back to the console now, I'm in inputs mode still. I still have my safes in play. I've built uh, bank safe bypass into function one. And if I just press function one, you'll notice the, the uh, safes go away for just a second. My light is flashing, letting me know that I'm in uh, bank safe bypass. I press it once again, and now my safes come back into play. All right, so easy peasy. Really good, allows you to navigate and always keep control of those really crucial vital faders that you need to have at your disposal all the time during your events. All right, so that's bank safe with regard to how it works within a banking framework. Uh, make great use of it. It's a really, really wonderful workflow. All right, that's gonna wrap this video up. Please tune in for other uh, videos that I'm putting together on workflows and functionality on the console. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.